Americans and that is built from the middle out and the ground up. That's our vision for America. That's the work that we have been doing and will continue to do. On the other hand, extreme America Republicans have shown us who they are this week. Their economic agenda has nothing to do with the health, the safety, and the economic well-being of everyday Americans, and has everything to do with the wealthy, the well-off, the well-connected, and their right-wing extreme ideology. Extreme Bank of Republicans have a three-part economic agenda that they have made clear to the American people this week. One, we want to end Social Security as we know it. Two, massive tax cuts for billionaires and wealthy corporations. Three, dramatic spending cuts that will hurt the health, the safety, and the economic well-being of the American people. It's a radical, reckless, extreme, right-wing agenda that has nothing to do with looking out for the middle class. And that's what Republicans have shown us this week. Questions? Thank you, Leader Jeffries. Um, <clears throat> two questions. Uh, one, um, I, so, what, so I asked uh, Speaker McCarthy about him saying, oh, well, you know, bathroom laws, you know, and that bill was in response to former President Trump allegedly having boxes of classified documents. Um, in a bathroom at Mar-a-Lago, and I asked him, you know, well, what about, you know, Secretary Clinton reportedly having uh, a private server, which had classified information, also be in the bathroom. And he said, well, you know, the one thing she did with her email, she went and got a software to bleach it. President Trump had the boxes returned, so we'd love to get your reaction to that. And second, do you think the uh, classification system, you know, speaker of top secret, confidential needs to be reformed? The Trump indictment speaks for itself. The facts as we understand it speak for itself, and the trial will speak for itself. And I have every confidence in the jurors and in the American people uh, to arrive at the outcome that is just. And on the, if we need a reform or classification system? Well, that's a question that I think is better directed at the moment uh, to the top Democrat on the Intel Committee, Jim Himes, who as I understand it, we'll continue to engage in a bipartisan discussion with the other side of the aisle to figure out if there are any adjustments that reasonably can be made for the good of the American people. Thank you. There's a bit of a kerfuffle about how the White House displayed the pride flag for uh, Pride Month here alongside American flag. Senator Marshall has introduced le uh, legislation to say, look, we need to adhere to this flag code. Speaker McCarthy hung American flags out front here yesterday. What do you make of this, number one, and do you think that the White House went, uh, did, they, did they err in any way, the way they displayed the pride flag, the way that the flag code is supposed to be displaying the American flag? Uh, extreme MAGA Republicans continue to engage in petty performance politics. They are not uh, serious about addressing the issues that are of importance to the American people. Uh, I'm unfamiliar uh, with this controversy, so to speak, that Republicans are spending their time putting into the public domain. But I am confident that what the American people want us to focus on is building an economy that works for the middle class and all those Americans who aspire to be part of the middle class. Uh, the Republicans on the Ways and Means Committee advanced the GOP tax scam part two. It is legislation that will benefit billionaires and wealthy corporations and continue 
this pattern of Republicans engaging in public policy that is designed to give major giveaways to those who are already not paying their fair share. We need a fair and equitable tax code that invests in everyday Americans through things like the child tax credit, which extreme MAGA Republicans on the Ways and Means Committee rejected. The GOP tax scam part two will continue what was done as part of the GOP tax scam part one, in which case 83% of the benefits went to the wealthiest 1% in 2017 and exploded the debt by $2 trillion. The GOP tax scam part two will explode the debt by an additional $1 trillion. Just a week or two after, they were pretending to care about the deficit. You can't take these people seriously. They don't care about fiscal responsibility. They care about big tax cuts to the wealthy, the well-off, and the well-connected. That's what they continue to show the American people. And as a result, there's no pathway toward finding common ground if extreme MAGA Republicans aren't interested in an economy that actually is designed to benefit everyday Americans. As Democrats, we're going to continue to fight for lower costs, fight for better paying jobs, fight to protect Social Security and Medicare, and fight against these extreme MAGA Republican cuts that they're trying to jam down the throats of the American people on the Appropriations Committee, inconsistent with an agreement connected to the default crisis that they themselves negotiated and voted for. You cannot take these people seriously. They don't have any good intentions when it comes to everyday Americans. And this week crystallized that in so many ways. Well, we're going to see how the Appropriations Committee ends in terms of its process. And it's our view that a resolution was reached and was voted on in a bipartisan way. And at the end of the day, any spending agreement that is arrived at by the end of the year has to be consistent with the resolution of the default crisis. Otherwise, what was it all for? Why did we tie avoiding a default to make sure that America pays its bills with a top-line spending agreement? What was it all for? Because now all we're engaging in is right-wing theater designed to jam extreme painful cuts down the throats of the American people. And Democrats will not let it happen because we're looking out for the American people. We're looking out for the middle class. We're looking out for those who aspire to be part of the middle class. We're looking out for Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and nutrition assistance and veterans. And we're not going to allow the extreme MAGA Republicans to do anything to undermine the American people. Second row. To that point, do you still see value in negotiating with Speaker McCarthy, whether it be on appropriations bills or any other key must-pass items that need to pass this year? We remain committed as Democrats to trying to find common ground whenever and wherever possible in order to advance the interests of the American people. But at the same time, as we have consistently said, we're going to oppose their extremism whenever necessary. And what's happening before the Appropriations Committee right now is extreme. It will hurt everyday Americans. It will hurt the middle class. It will hurt seniors. It will hurt veterans. And we're not going to stand for it. And what many of the right-winning extremists clearly want to do is shut down the government. They shut down the government under President Clinton. They shut down the government 
under President Obama. They even shut down the government under President Trump as part of some effort to try to extort the American people for billions of dollars to pay for Trump's medieval border wall. Shutting down the government is in their DNA because they're irresponsible individuals. They don't care about government. And so what we see right now taking place in the appropriations process is perhaps an effort by some extreme MAGA Republicans to drive us toward a government shutdown. And that's a shame. I think that uh, Democrats in New York and throughout the country are united around some core values. We're united around the fact uh, that we want to grow the middle class in New York State and across the country. We're united around the fact that we want to defend reproductive freedom, while the other side of the aisle wants to criminalize abortion care and impose a nationwide ban. We're united around the fact that we need to do something meaningful around gun safety and to stop the gun violence epidemic in the United States of America. The extreme MAGA Republicans this week, including every single New York Republican, voted to make it easier to kill Americans and unleash carnage on children voted to make it easier, consistent with the NRA. So I've got no concern as it relates to whether in New York or in any other part of the country, Democrats are going to be restrained or constrained in our ability to draw a contrast with the people on the other side of the aisle. We're team normal. We're team reasonable. We're team get stuff done. Republicans are team chaos, team dysfunction, and team extreme. Mr. Leader? Thank you. It's been months uh, since a number of Supreme Court justices have been exposed for crossing ethical lines. Can you provide any updates on what members of Congress are doing to bring checks and balances to the Supreme Court so that Americans don't lose complete faith in SCOTUS? Well, Senate Democrats under the leadership of Dick Durbin uh, and others in the Senate Democratic Conference are working hard uh, to bring some accountability to an out-of-control right-wing Supreme Court, Exhibit A, Clarence Thomas, but there are others who clearly are engaging in problematic, ethically questionable behavior. And on the House Democratic side, under the leadership of Chairman Nadler, the once and future chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler and others, uh, it's my expectation that we will explore all avenues for making sure that the Supreme Court conducts itself in an equitable way. Because at the end of the day, if the final arbiter of the rule of law, the Supreme Court of the United States, is undermining or behaving in a manner consistent with the rule of law, then that is problematic for the country. It's not a Democratic issue or Republican issue. It's an American issue. And so I think that exploration will continue. But we're not holding our breath in terms of whether the extreme MAGA Republicans in the House are going to do anything to hold the right-wing majority of the Supreme Court accountable in any way, shape, or form. So ultimately, this issue may have to get litigated before the American people. Thank you. Yeah. Corner. Aisle. Thanks. Speaker McCarthy says that he wants to have a debate about uh, restructuring the FBI. Is that one that House Democrats would be open to? And also, uh, do you support the White House's decision to ban Rose Montoya from the grounds? Uh, I'm unfamiliar with the second issue. We can look into it. In terms of the question about the FBI, extreme mega Republicans want to defund the FBI. They don't want to restructure the FBI. The majority of the House Republican Conference wants to defund the FBI. They're constantly attacking law enforcement. They're going after the Department of Justice. 
all because they've been given orders to do that by the former twice impeached president of the United States of America. That's unfortunate. We're a separate and co-equal branch of government. We don't even work for sitting presidents. We work for the American people, let alone working for a former president. Last question. Um, if I could just follow up on the migrant, influx of migrant people in New York. Republicans already look like they're going to start messaging for 2024 on that issue. And I'm curious if Democrats will respond directly to the migrant issue at all and how. In terms of New York, under the leadership of uh, Chuck Schumer and in partnership with the New York congressional delegation, we're working hard to make sure that New York City gets the relief that it needs in order to ma manage the migrant situation in a manner consistent with our values as Americans, with the rule of law, uh, but the fact that people who are seeking refuge and fleeing persecution are entitled to due process. And Consistent with that, we were able to secure recently over $100 million in assistance, and we're going to continue uh, to work to do just that. Thank you, everyone. Well, Your prediction actually, about the I, ball game was wrong. You just, <laughs> you just win. That's okay, though, because I've been here since 2012, and in that time, Democrats still have a winning record. You say that. Uh, we'll, <laughs> last quote, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, Basil Jones with Next Star. So we're coming up on a year since the Dobbs Today, the White House is actually hosting a couple of state representatives, even one from New York is coming, uh, to talk about how states are addressing uh, the issue that the White House sees, which is protecting reproductive rights. What are your thoughts on the administration taking this approach to tap on, to tap into the state approach and the state level to address this issue across the country? Well, it's an important step that the White House is taking because this is an all hands on deck moment. What the Supreme Court did in the Dobbs decision was to strip away freedom from tens of millions of women in the United States of America. That's inconsistent with who we are as a country. We add freedoms in our march toward a more perfect union, not strip away freedom. And on this issue, we're going to have to continue to work at every level of government to get back to a place where the framework that was in existence under Roe v. Wade is restored across the country. And this is going to be a big issue that we will litigate before the American people because Democrats believe in a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions, and Republicans want to criminalize abortion care and impose a nationwide ban, and we're going to stop that from happening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. 16 runs. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>